Hey YouTube, Todd here with another video for you. Today I'm going to do another walkthrough of my full orchestral template. Uh, I recently did a change to it and I changed my approach of how my template was set up from the previous video that I posted a couple months back. So let's take a little bit. Um, basically the, the main thing of why I chose to redo my template is I wanted something that was more streamlined and easier to use for me. Uh, if you remember before, my old template, it had over, you know, a thousand some tracks and a bunch of folders with all the different sample libraries and all that. And using that for a few months with composing, I would get lost and it just, it would just get too overwhelming, you know, trying to find instruments that I need to and just take too much time. So I have a new approach and I also added something new that I learned from a fellow YouTuber, Blackius. Um, I kind of took his approach on how he sketches and I added it into my template. So let's get started at the top here. The top is pretty much the same as it was previously. And if you want to know how to split your tracks into these different here, all you have to do is hit this button over here and it will add this up here so you can put tracks at the top. Uh, so I got my seconds here, my signature, uh, the tempo, chord track, markers, and I added this new thing. Here you see it's 433. I got this from Ashton Glickman. He's uh, a YouTuber and a streamer. Uh, his He streams on Twitch. Um, this is something that he does and I incorporated it into my template. Basically, this is a John Cage track uh, named 433. It's basically four minutes of just silence. You can hear like the audience and the orchestra, you know, touching their bows and, you know, just making noise. So it basically just puts an ambiance into your track. So it's something I've seen him doing, so I'm trying it myself. Right now I just have the full track in there, but I'm probably going to go in and cut it into sections where there's noises um, to do that. So so that's what that is. Um, so it wasn't something I came up with. It's something that Ashton did, uh, so I'm giving credit to him. You can find him on YouTube. All right, so basically this is a, a whole new approach uh, through my previous template. Um, basically, so I added a, a piano sketch, A, B, sections and ideas so these are all piano uh, tracks here let me click on one to show you which piano i'm using it really doesn't make a difference on what piano or you're using i'm using uh, the cinematic studio piano uh, i really like this one uh, the way it sounds so this is what i'm using for all four of those tracks so the idea of why i did this so I used to be a composer that would, you know, just find an instrument, like do a string patch normally, put out some chords, stuff like that, and, you know, build the track that way. Well, I saw uh, Blackius in his recent video, uh, Fly on the Wall, I saw him doing this and I incorporated it into my template and I'm trying to incorporate it into my writing styles. Basically, I'm going to sketch out the whole piece before I even, you know, orchestrate it. Uh, with just a simple piano so I can get the you know the A section the B section and so basically I have the piano sketch that's where I just put the sketch down you know really rough it doesn't need to be in time nothing like that it's just really rough so then I can break it down the A section put that here and put the B section there so then I have this track here called ideas so if I'm composing the track and you know, I'm messing around, I'll get, I'll take it out. And if I want to come up with new ideas, I'll put those there. If I come up with a new idea, I could put them there. So basically I'm cataloging the whole comp composition up here at the front before I'm even, you know, orchestrating. Um, so that I'm, I'm trying to do that new approach. And I think this is really going to help me a lot. So this is might be something you want to add to your template. So that's the idea behind that. Um, so then my first section here, what we're going to go into is I have woodwinds. And basically how I have my template laid out now is I have it in orchestral score format. So if you got a score to an orchestral piece, this is how it should lay out. Or it might vary, um, you know, depending on who's the composer and stuff. But this is how I chose to do it. And as you can see, there's no more folders in my, my template like there was before. Um, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it and then come back to this video so you can know exactly what I'm referencing to. Uh, it should be in my track listing. It should say full orchestral template walkthrough. So basically I have this laid out. So I have my piccolos up here, my flutes, one, two, et cetera, et cetera. And the sample libraries that I'm using here, uh, I believe the majority of my woodwinds is Ber Berlin woodwinds. I really like the sound of them. They sound really great. I do have uh, Cinewinds, which I do like, and they just did an update, but I'm just so, I've been using Berlin Woodwinds for so long now that I'm just, I'm so accustomed to that sound. So I might go in and add, you know, Cinewinds in here uh, in the future. 
But as you can see, I have everything laid out here. And then I got my flutes, uh, then the oboes, one and two, English horn, clarinets, one and two, bassoons, uh, one and two. And then I got my, uh, these are Hollywood winds down here from Cine uh, samples, uh, just the runs, which I don't tend to use a lot. I use basically the runs sometimes, but I'm trying to get away from using these and actually programming them into the keyboard. But um, I do have them here. So that's pretty much it. And so basically going back to what I said at the top of the video is I basically scaled my template down into instruments that I just need. And it's very flexible. So if I need to add a different, like I said, if I want to add a Cinewinds uh, flute or whatever, all I have to do is just basically duplicate this track and then switch out the contact instance of that instrument, put it in, and I'm good. Because I have all these um, tracks right here set up the way I want them. So I have all my MIDI information set up, which is a video, a quick tip video um, on my channel to show you how to do it in Cubase to set up all your uh, MIDI stuff like CC1, uh, 7, 11 and stuff like that. A really quick and easy way to do that. So if you want help on that, there's a video I have posted. So I have all that information in here and all I have to do is duplicate the track and it's done. So that's the reason behind this template. Um, like I said before, I had so many tracks and folders, I just get lost in it. And that's not what we're here to do. We're here to compose music. So that's my woodwind section. So let's go look at brass. So brass gets, a, so each section of the orchestra gets a little more complicated within my template, but not too complicated. So for my brass, I'm using, um, this is a venture brass horns, which is just one patch. Um, I, I, Incorporate this because I want to use this more. I really like the playability, and I'm a I'm one of those composers that likes to play because I'm a guitar player by by you know that's that's where I that's why that's my main instrument. I play guitar, so you know I'm not a very good keyboard player, which is something I'm working on. But I'm one of those people I have to play out the parts. It's just I get, I think that's my guitarist mentality. If you're a guitar player, you probably relate to me. I just I have to play it. I can't program it in MIDI. It's just I don't. It just feels like I'm cheating. So. Um, anyway, so then I have sample modeling, French horns, one, two, three, four. That's just one patch. Um, you know, then it goes into, I'm using, my main uh, brass library is Cinebrass, uh, Pro and Core. I really like Cinebrass's sounds. I like Cine samples altogether. I just like their sound because it has that traditional film score sound, which appeals to me. Um, so I got my horns, uh, all the articulations here. I got two horns, six horns, 12 horns, and then I go into my trumpets. So I have adventure brass trumpets and then sample modeling trumpets one, two, and three. And then I got my cine brass core and pro trumpets, et cetera, et cetera. It, it just follows the same layout as I do up all the way up to the bottom for all the uh, instruments. So I have trombone, tuba, bass, and then uh, just tuba solo. And then I have my ensemble patches here uh, with that come included with cine brass. So the cine brass ensembles, and then I have monster low brass here. So that's my brass section. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, now we go on to percussion. So I'm using just Cineperk. I believe it's orchestral part. So I have all of Cineperk. They uh, recently, I think it was a year or two ago, they combined all of Cineperk into one bundle. Um, so I'm just using the orchestral bundle. So I got my timpani, bass drum, snares, um, et cetera, snares, uh, cymbals, you know, xylophone, glockenspiel, all that stuff. Um, and then down here I got... I think from the, it's called Epic or their, their Epic version of, um, of Cineperk. So I have the, the Tycho's and Serto's and Monster Low Hits and Monster Swishes. Sometimes I use those. And then I have, um, Hans Zimmer's percussion, uh, HC01, uh, the Junkie XL mixes, uh, for all that. And then I have a sub hits that's from Albion 2. I, I really like Albion 2 sub hits. I just like its sound. It's got a really good sound. So I tend to use those for sub hits. Um, I think sometimes I use the uh, the low hits of from Cineperk. They have a really good sub. Or I think um, they actually have the one of their standalone percussion libraries uh, has a really good sub hit in it. But I used to have it in my template, but I don't have it anymore. Because it wasn't something I used all the time. Um, like I said, the whole point of this template is to use the tracks that I use all the time and not waste time. Like I said, it's very flexible where I can bring in new tracks if needed uh, for whatever piece I'm working on. Uh, so, all right, so next we go to keyboards and harp. 
Um, so basically, this is Cinematic Studio Piano right here, which is I have up here. But you know, I tend I tend to have a few different varieties of pianos because the sound. Sometimes when I'm working on tracks, some pianos don't work with that track, or vice versa. It just it calls for a different type of piano sound. So I have the uh, Cinematic Studio Piano here. I have a Concert Grand, which this is this is out of the Factory Contact Library that comes with Contact. Um, don't think that there is not good instruments in there. There's some very good instruments. Um, if you're doing layering, that will work well, and people will not even know, you know, hey, that's not, you know, the top of the line sample art. Nobody's gonna know. So I have that in here. I have the Grandeur Piano in Blue, the Maverick Gentleman, and then I have from uh, Contact Factory Library, I have the Harpsichord, which actually sounds really good. Uh, so Spitfire Felt Piano, this is really cool. I'm gonna show you this one. It sounds really good. I like it. Just got a you know a nice soft sound to it. Um, so you can get this off of Spitfire Labs if you donate to UNICEF. I think it's like two pounds or it comes out to like two or three dollars American, uh, USA. Um, so really highly recommend you go and look at uh, Spitfire Labs. They have some really good gems in there. So that's something I got there. You know if you're looking for a more intimate kind of sound. So it's called the Spitfire Felt Piano. Um, actually, let me let me open it up real quick. Um, as you can tell, when I'm deactivating and activating tracks, um, that's how this template works. Um, Cubase, since Cubase 8.5 has this functionality where you can basically deactivate tracks and it pulls it out of your memory. I'm running a 2010 Mac Pro with 32 gigs of RAM. Everything is hosted on my main computer. I don't have any slaves. So that's the only reason that this template works is from that functionality. Because if I turned on all my tracks here, I have like 535 tracks, it'd blow my computer up. Um, you know, when I'm composing, I'm not using 500 tracks. I use maybe 30 to 40, maybe 50 tracks at the most. Um, and my comp computer usually handles it. I'm running, I think, uh, at my uh, buffers is like 256 when I'm composing. But, you know, if I need to, I can bump it up to 512. And it usually runs pretty smooth. As you can tell, the, um, my my video's in the way here. I'll lower that. But as you can see, I'm running, It's it's got a little bit, just because I have... Uh, all my reverbs on, I think, right now. Um, when I turn those off, that green usually goes down. But here's the uh, Spitfire Felt, pian uh, Felt Piano. It just says Spitfire Laboratories, and that's it. It's very simple. Um, so anyway, went off on a little tangent there. But uh, yeah, so then I got the Cine Harp uh, here, and then I have Spitfire Harp. The reason I have two different harps is because sometimes when I'm composing a track, the Cine Harp works, and sometimes the Spitfire one works. So it just depends on the track that I'm composing. Uh, so that's pretty much it for keyboards and harps uh, with harpsichord as well. Um, very simple, very basic. Uh, something I'm going to repeat over and over. Um, but basically, like I was like I was saying about my template and how it can run on here. This is Cubase nine. I should have said that up there. I'm running the newest version of Cubase. This is Cubase nine. This is an eight point five, which I really like. They really changed it. They added a couple of new features where it actually now you can finally have the mixer or your MIDI window within the same window. That's beautiful. That was something in Logic that I loved about Logic uh, that Cubase didn't have that now they have. So I'm pretty much, I love Cubase and I don't think I'll ever go back to Logic Pro. Um, I went back to it because they did an interface update and I just, it just, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't work for me. I, I love Cubase. It works for me. Um, and it, like I said, without that deactivate thing, I, I wouldn't be able to run a template like this um, without slave computers. So if you're, um if you have a you know if you don't have slaves and you know you just have one computer uh definitely i would go this route it works and like i said all these tracks that are in here they're all instrument tracks so this is a single instance of contact with all of them all right so let's go to my strings so strings it gets a little even more complicated because strings is a very complicated instrument there's a lot of articulation stuff like that compared to brass and you know woodwinds so how I have this laid out, I'm using Cine Strings Solo, Cine Strings, and I think I have Soaring Strings and Cinematic Studio Strings. These tend to be my most go-to string libraries. I have a couple more, I think, but I just like the sound of them. I'm really, really loving the sound of Cinematic Studio Strings. They sound amazing. They sound like a film score, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what, uh, I think it's music sampling, uh, the, or no, no, Cinematic Studio Strings, uh, just Cinematic Studio, I think, is the company. Uh, they plan on releasing a brass, woodwinds, and percussion library. So I'm very interested in the future to see what those sound like because I might 
switch and put those in my template as well. Uh, but I'm like I said, I'm predominantly use Cine uh, Sample stuff. I just love their stuff. So back to the way I have this. Um, this is score order. So it's Phylon one. So that's Cine String solo that I got running here. Uh, and then it goes into Cine String. So there's a Phylon. So those are ensemble patches. Um, so I got those laid out there. Then it goes to Cinematic Studio Strings, Violins one, and then Soaring Strings. Uh, right here i just have the violins legato and sustains and then i go into violins two you know same as violins one all articulations then to uh cinematic studio strings and then i don't think i have soaring strings yeah there's no soaring strings for violins two all right now we're off into uh, viola so i have viola that are cine strings solo and then into uh cine strings just cine strings uh which is the ensembles and then cinematic studio strings and uh Soaring strings. So basically, that's the same template. So I got my violins one, violins two, violas, cellos, and basses going down there with all articulations. And then down here at the bottom, as you can see, I have my ensemble patches because sometimes I like to work out full. I'm trying to get away from this. This is this goes back to the top, you know, with the p piano sketches. I'm trying to get away because I normally used to just put up a a set of strings, you know, or a cinematic studio strings ensemble patch and then write everything out that way and then leave it in the track i'm trying to break away from that and write individual parts which is usually better it makes your mock-up sound a lot better a little more realistic uh, so yeah up here at the top so i'm trying to write the whole piece with the piano sketch and then orchestrating it out later all right finally we're off to the choir so as you can see my choirs is very basic i'm just using uh cine samples voxos I really like the sound of it. I think it leans more towards film scoring um, than Epic, but I think you can do Epic with this. You know, um, I've heard Voxos be done with Epic tracks, but I'm not really an Epic composer. I kind of like to, kind of my own thing, I guess. I'm a hybrid, I guess. I, I don't know. I because I like classic film scores of you know John Williams and Alan Silvestri and all that stuff. But I do like what Hans Zimmer and stuff like that. I appreciate what he does. So I'm trying to blend the two, which I think you know works for me or what I think what my symphony would sound like. Um, so yeah, so basically this is very light right now. I, I do have some other choirs, but I tend to, to gravitate towards Voxos. Um, so I like that. So that's all the patches. I know I use chords a lot um, and the fra phrase builder. Uh, I tend to use those two patches quite a bit when I do use choir. I try to stay away from choir because I think choir is overdone. You know, it's, it's in every track. So I'm kind of Try to, you know, try to be different and try to stand out. So, and lastly, we're on to synths. Um, right now, I just have four instances of, um, or five, sorry, five instances of on, Omnisphere. They're, they're completely uh, blank within Omnisphere. So, because I notice sometimes when I do use Omnisphere or synths and tracks, I tend to use a lot of different uh, tracks of Omnisphere. Um, and like I said, this is very flexible. So if I need to use any other types of synths, I can just duplicate this track take out atmosphere, put in the track I need, and everything's there. And the reason why I'm saying this, because I'm saving this for last, is the routing. I've already set up my routing the way I want it with all these tracks. So when I do duplicate it, all my settings stay the same, and I don't have to go back and do that. That's one thing with my quick, ticks, quick tips video. Sorry, there's a little slur, um, Freudian slip right there. Um, I think I didn't mention is... Or I, I think I did is when you do a template and you want to get all your MIDI information, your CC1 and all that stuff in there, you know, you have to do it for each track. So that can be very cumbersome. So I did it for one track, set it all up, and it made it very, very simple to do. So I recommend if you're doing a template and you're going to go follow my quick tips video, say that six times fast, um, to follow this procedure, create your track once and then just duplicate from there. So now let's let's open up the mixer here. Um, I think I have some stuff turned off. Yeah, here we go. Let me turn this back on. So basically, I'm trying to set up where all my instruments are separate v, uh, VX tracks, um, effects tracks, and then I have reverbs on those because I'm using uh, see all these reverbs up here. That's why that when I showed you earlier the green spiking because they're all turned on. So I'm using QL spaces at the moment. Um, and I'm using the Southern California Hall. The reason I'm using this one is because they have a lot of all the sections broken up and single instruments. So the instruments that you see down here is what 
the uh, QL spaces has. So that's why I have these here. So not all my instruments are there. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Or if there's a better way to do this, I'm really bad at this um, stuff. I'm still learning. So if you have a better way or a video or a tutorial, please link it below. I'll really appreciate it. Um, but for right now, this is working for me. Uh, one second, I'm going to open up a uh, an instrument here just to show you how I have all the uh, instruments routed. Okay, so basically how I have it is I have these sending to their individual here. And then one thing I did with all, my whole template is um, I read on VI Control, um, a person did, they set all their tracks to negative 12. So basically I'm, I'm following that. So all my tracks are set to negative 12. And the way I'm thinking of this is, you know, if I need a little bit more, I can bump it. But, you know, everything's set at negative 12. So it all should be similar, but to get everything sounding similar, you have to adjust your CC1, 7, and all that stuff. I'm still learning. I don't have that set up in my template as of yet because I'm still trying to figure all that stuff out. Um, so the, yeah, the, so that's basically how I have it, and then I have everything in sections. So I have everything in woodwinds, brass, uh, percussion, keyboards, harp, and strings. The reason harp is different from keyboards and piano is just because uh, QL Spaces has a separate uh, reverb for just harp. So I kind of separate those from piano. That's why that has its own thing. Um, and then on my master bus, I just have an L1 um, here. And then I have uh, slates. Um, hold on here. There, it's all on my second screen. So I got to pull them over. So I got slates. Uh, what is this? I can't remember what this is. It's just the VBC. Um, this is just red glue HP. I tend to like that one. Um, so I use that. And then I have a virtual tape machine, uh, Slate's virtual tape machine, just to bring some analog feel to the track. And then uh, this is something I, I can't remember where I picked this up, but I saw it. I have a transient master just to keep the transients there. And I have this set to more room. So this isn't, you know, gospel here this is the way to do it this is how i'm doing it like i said i'm really bad at this i'm learning so if you have a better way or any suggestions hey please feel free to leave them below i i'm totally open for criticisms and trying to grow and make this better um i think this might have a little too much reverbs but um so i don't know so that's basically that um let me deactivate this track so, like I said, if you go watch my previous template video, you know, there was a lot of stuff. I've scaled it down a lot and I'm changing my approach of how I uh, go about creating music and composing. It's supposed to be simple and it's not supposed to be daunting. And I think adding these tracks here um, is really going to help my composing and really think about the piece. You know, in its simplest form, that's something I've learned from Mike Verda. If you don't know who Mike Verda is, he's on VI Control. He's on YouTube. Look him up if you're just getting started. He's got great master classes on this, and I've learned a lot and still learning. And every time I think I've, I think I'm there. Like, okay, good. No, you, you gotta learn more. So, uh, he, you know, he's, he basically says, you know, you know, if you can't play it with a piano, your piece with two fingers. It probably isn't a good piece. So that's something I'm I really went home and revised my template and and figured that okay, I need to start sketching the whole piece out before I start composing and putting all the other stuff in there. Uh let's get the essence of the piece. So that's that's why I put these four tracks. So definitely if you don't have this in your template, uh definitely try putting it there because I think this could definitely help you. Um so that's pretty much it. Um it's very simple. Um, and that's what I was going for. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them below the video. If not, you can reach out to me personally. Uh, my email is toddkedwards at gmail. Um, if you're comfortable with Twitter, um, I'm trying to use Twitter more and trying to, you know, put everything that I'm doing. Because I also live stream and it's kind of taken, taken a backseat for a while. But I'm going to try to get back into live streaming on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Todd K Edwards. Everything's Todd K Edwards. So, but follow me up on Twitter. If you want to ask me a question, that's probably the best way to do it. I'll get back to you right away because it's on my phone. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Um, and I will see you on my next video. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. And if you have any suggestions or any other videos you want to see, 
uh, go ahead and leave them below in the comment sections. All right, thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.